All right. So good evening. Welcome to Crafty Adults here at the Champaign Public Library. Oh, come on, view. I can see you, Rachel. There we go. Okay. Well, I can see me too. So as long as you can see at least me along with the screen um, of Laura's supply list, that's good enough. Um, I work here at the library. My name is Rachel Ferrier. Um, this Crafty Adult series is a popular series that we host several times a year. Um, each session we focus on a different creative project that you can usually complete within about an hour. Um, we have done a lot of different crafts, including macrame, candle making, we've done some watercolor, and we've even taught folks how to put together their own planners. Um, tonight, as I said, we're going to do some geometric jewelry with our library staff member, Laura Rice. And before I pass this over to Laura, I'll go ahead and go over some logistics. Um, for questions and comments, and if you've joined us before, I know you know this, but if you're new, welcome. Um, for questions and comments, you'll have the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. We'll primarily use that. So at any time, if you have a question and you want to enter that in there, go right ahead. We'll read those out um, for Laura, who may not always have access to seeing the um, chat. So we'll read those out for her. The other option is the raise hand button at the bottom. If you would rather just say your question out loud, you can go ahead and select that button and we can unmute you. Um, and that's at the bottom, like I said, along with your chat. And one other thing, we can share your screen at the end of the webinar to show our individual projects if you're interested in sharing what you've created. Um, just let us know if you're interested in doing that and we will go ahead and allow that. So let me get on over to Laura here so that we can get started. Hi, everybody. I will show my face here in just a moment. Um, a technical thing real quick. Uh, Rachel, we should be able to, someone kindly reminded us that we um, do have captions available for our webinars, and we should be able to turn that feature on on your end. Um, there should be something that says enable, I think it says enable caption or transcript kind of at the bottom. I got it, and that should be going now. Perfect. Yep, I'm seeing it on my screen. So hopefully if you'd like to see that, you can see that there. Great. Thank you for that reminder. Um, I do not always remember to get that feature on up at the top. So anyway, let's get, we got some technical things going on at the beginning of this, this webinar here. Hopefully you all can see me now. Uh, my name is Laura Rice, and I work here at the library, and I coordinate the series. Sometimes I teach it, like this evening. Um, so this one's kind of a fun little project um, where we're going to basically make our own kind of little fun, little wooden sculptures that we're going to use um, as jewelry pieces. So I'm excited to show you guys this. Um, I just want to walk you through kind of what this evening is going to look like. Um, we're going to start out. Um, going through supplies. So I'm going to go through all the supplies that you have in your kits. Um, I'm going to do a brief little presentation on color theory, um, hopefully to get you um, kind of thinking about mixing colors and um, what kind of paint you want to, paint colors you want to use this evening. So we're going to go through that. Um, then we're going to do a little bit of experimenting with our wooden shapes. If you've gone through your supplies already and kind of looked through, you'll see you've got a little package of wooden shapes. Um, then we're going to go through and do some color mixing. So Rachel and I are both going to be mixing some different colors for you on screen to kind of show you what um, some different examples of color mixing are. Then we're going to get into painting our wooden shapes. After we paint our wooden shapes, we'll be constructing them into jewelry. So you can kind of see I've got one of my pins on here right now. I made this kind of look abstract brooch to wear and I'm like kind of crazy about wearing brooches. So I'm excited to have these little geometric shapes in the mix. A lot of times I just have flowers. So now I get to have some geometry here. So that's going to kind of be the rundown of our class this evening. We've got quite a bit to cover. Um, after we construct our pieces, we all will have the option to share our screens if you want to share what you've created with everybody. And I think that'll be fun tonight because seriously, everyone's going to have a different piece. 
everything is going to look completely different depending on your colors, depending on your shapes. So we've got a lot of customization with this webinar um, experience here. So I'm going to flip over to my desktop here and we're going to walk through supplies. There we go. Okay, so let me clear out my space here. So everybody should have their instruction or their supply list that has everything that you should have in your um, bag. Next thing, um, everyone should have a little bag of wooden shapes. So everybody's got different shapes. Some maybe will have more triangles. Some may have more circles. I don't know. It's super random. So I hope you enjoy what you've got. Um, the next thing is paint. So everybody has some of these little cups of paint. We specifically chose to uh, provide you with primary colors so you can work on some color mixing. We did include white and we did include pink because pink is kind of one of those colors that's hard to mix um, and you kind of just need to have pink. So you should have all five of those paints. You should also have a little cup that has some um, little jewelry findings in it and that's going to be um, you will have enough to make two pairs of earrings and two pins if you would like to. So you should have these things in here. I'm going to put the lid back on because I know myself and I will talk with my hands and flip the cup and then I'll have jewelry everywhere. So let's see. Other thing you should have, paint brushes. Everyone um, got these two small paint brushes. Sandpaper, kind of a fun random option here, but um, you will be able to cut some of your shapes down just with a simple pair of scissors. So we did include sandpaper in case you have sharp edges. Paper towels, we didn't provide paper towels, but it is crucial that you have some paper towels to blot your brush uh, when you are painting. Water cup, y'all should have a nice, cup full of water. You'll need that to clean out your brush when you're mixing your paint colors. You should also have scissors, which kind of will be optional depending on if you want to cut down any of your shapes. And you should have some scotch tape um, or masking tape. We're not really going to, it doesn't really matter what kind of tape, but we are going to use it during our painting process actually. And then the last thing is a hot glue gun. Um, this is going to be super handy when we're constructing our jewelry pieces. So I wanted to show you, um, speaking of constructing, a couple of images or a couple of uh, examples here that you might have seen in the slide when you signed up for this class. But here are some earrings that I made um, using this concept of making these little wooden sculptures into jewelry. So the backs have, um, actually that one doesn't anymore, the backs have some earring posts so I can wear these as earrings. Okay, so those are supplies that you'll have. The other thing that you'll uh, have in your kits that isn't on that list is kind of random and you might be wondering about it. These two bookmarks, we're actually going to use these bookmarks. I have a neat little trick to show you when we get to painting our shapes. Um, so do keep these, uh, keep those handy. Uh, we will be using those. They were intentional. They're not just uh, promotional materials. Um, and you know what I realized I didn't include on your list, but um, if we will need a little paint palette. So a paper plate would be handy or a styrofoam plate. Um, so hopefully you have that or even a piece of cardboard will work. I apologize. I just now realized I missed getting that on the list for you. So paper plate. And while you guys are hopefully gathering your supplies and getting your workstation set up, um, we are going to now come back over and talk about some color theory. Um, before I move on to that, I just want to make sure, do we have any questions coming in or anybody have any questions about the supply list before we pop into presentation mode? So far, nothing in the chat. I think we're all here with you. Okay. Excellent.
Someone did suggest if you don't have anything else available, you might be able to use the paper bag that everything came in as a palette. That could be super that resourceful. Yeah. And I love that. Why not? Yeah, apologize, guys. I should have uh, I should have uh, included that in your list. All right, so we're going to come into we're going to change gears here and talk about color. So hopefully everybody can see my screen here. And actually, real quick, I'm going to hide my thumbnail. Can you? I just want to hide my screen. Can you all see my Rachel? Can you see the camera? Or can you just see the screen? I see both. Let me let me oh. remove the spotlight from the other and see if that allows. No, it. that's okay. I I just forgot to switch myself over to human view and not the um. My gosh, technical. We are having some technical things this evening. There it goes. That looks good. All right. Now I wanted to come back over to me here. Now I'm going to share my screen again. So you weren't just looking at a blank, uh, whatever, a blank space talking. Here we go. Okay. Color combinations and theory. So I wanted to make sure that during this class, everyone got a chance to kind of get inspired and think about color and really have fun. I wanted this to be not just like you picking your favorite colors and making a little wooden sculpture. I want us to all think about actually mixing colors and what that, how to do it and what that is. Um, and I know not everybody has taken art classes or has any kind of history with with art. So I, I want to, I think it's important to talk through um, how to mix colors and what the different terms are for the different types of colors. So we're going to start with primary, which ironically is what you guys have in your kits today is primary colors, which are yellow, red, and blue. Um, I know this seems a little bit juvenile, but I promise it will be it will be handy for you as we get mixing. Um, you got your secondary colors, which you can see illustrated in this slide here with the dotted triangles. You've got green, orange, and violet or purple. Um, I'm probably going to use those interchangeably here. And then the other thing you have is tertiary colors, and those um, so primary colors are the three main ones. Secondary colors can be made with two primary colors and tertiary colors can be made with a, uh, with a primary color and a secondary color. So basically when you mix a yellow with an orange, you get yellow orange. When you mix red with orange, you get red orange. It seems obvious, but I think it could be challenging for people to see a color and then visualize how do I create that? Um, so a color wheel is an artist's best friend or a crafter's best friend so that you can really visualize how to create the colors that you see in your brain or that you see out on like a paint swatch and you're like, wonder how I can make that. Uh, it's all in the color wheel. So next thing I wanted to mention are complementary colors. So complementary colors are two colors that are opposite uh, on opposite sides of the color wheel. This combination provides a high contrast and high impact color combination. Together, these colors will appear brighter and more prominent. So something interesting is like, of course, we think of red and green, maybe holiday. Um, blue and orange here in Illinois, of course, we think Illini, but maybe purple and yellow. People in California are thinking of the whatever the Los Angeles team is. <laughs> the Lakers? Can you tell I'm an artist, not a sports person? Um, but you can see there's a reason why people choose to combine these complementary colors. They're high contrast, they look nice together, and they really stand out. So a purple and a red, they will meld together, whereas a green and a red, they really, um, they really stick out next to each other and make make something beautiful. So you can see here on the side of kind of like illustrated with um, some different shapes, some different um, complementary color combinations. So aside from just your basic red and green, orange and blue, of course your secondary colors will be across from each other as well. And they'll have a complementary color on the opposite side of the wheel. 
So you all have, um, I wanted to mention, you all have this, uh, the main key, the key um, color combinations here on your handout. So you'll be able to refer to these while we're actually creating our colors, not just during this presentation. Um, the other thing we have is analogous colors, and those are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Um, so analogous colors are three colors that are side by side on the color wheel. This combination is versatile, but it can also be overwhelming. So to balance an analogous color scheme, um, I recommend choosing a dominant color and then using the other two as an accent. So if during your um, creation today you want to use green, yellow, and orange, uh, for example, uh, maybe pick one to be your dominant color. So maybe you want orange to really stand out and then have some little accent pieces of yellow and green. It will look great and it won't be too overwhelming for your eyes. Next, we're going to talk about monochromatic colors. Um, those are three shades of one base color. And we're going to really focus on monochromatic colors today because I think it's important when you're learning how to mix colors, how to like to get into how to make a dark, a medium, and a light of the same color. Um, it's super important during any painting, whether you're doing something like this or whether you're painting um, something more realistic and you need to get um, a highlights color and a shadow color. So this is something that you'll be able to use across different mediums, not just with your um, with our painting today. Um, three shades, tones, and tints of one base color um, is what makes up a monochromatic color scheme. Um, it provides a subtle and conservative color combination. It's a versatile color combination that's easy to apply to design product projects for a harmonious look. So think about, um, I kind of have a little example here, although it's not three, it's only two, this little pair of earrings. Um, by using both those purples, um, they're harmonious, they look nice together, and I personally feel like for that top circle um, piece, they could have used another color, another shade of purple, and that would have really looked nice. So um, I think we'll see later, Rachel actually is wearing a pair of monochromatic purple geometric earrings today, so we'll have to have her show you those later on so you can see. Um, but monochromatic is a really nice way to make some different shades and have them all, um, it looks harmonious, it looks nice together. I love these little examples on the side where they almost just look like paint swatches like you would get from the paint store. So I think we'll all have fun creating that this evening. All right, and here's where we're gonna get a little different. Um, we'll have time at the end if you wanna ask any questions about color theory, but for the most part, that was just a very quick overview. You could spend an entire college course talking about color theory. It's not something you can really cover in five minutes. So that those are just um, some examples and just something to make you really think about what colors we're going to use today. Um, so I wanted to share with you all an artist um, that I stumbled upon that I just like, I love their work. And it kind of got me thinking about crafty adults and how to translate these beautiful wooden sculptures into wearable art. So pieces of jewelry that you could wear out. So this artist, and I'm not sure how to pronounce their name, but I'm going to call them Tilda Grinerip today. Um, and they, she is a multi multidisciplinary artist working across different media such as textile, wood, installation, conceptual, photography, and film. So what we'll be talking about today um, are actually her wood sculptures that you can see three examples right below here. And you can look her up uh, after this if you want to see her. She has seriously so much amazing art. Um, but what she does is takes these wooden shapes, which almost to me just look like children's blocks, um, but maybe a little bit more sophisticated, and she turns them into these sculptures. And I absolutely love her use of color. I think it's so inspiring to see the color she chooses to put together, the shapes she puts together, even like just deciding which shapes to paint which colors. I, I would love to see her art studio. I think it would be so fun um, just to get inside her brain with some of those things. So 
I thought it'd be fun to look through some of her work for us to get inspired to make our sculptures this evening. So here's another piece. And I love looking at the one on the left. We can see like this one's more, more complex than some of her other pieces. There's a lot more negative space and there's a lot of like smaller elements. Whereas I feel like some of her other sculptures like the one on the right are larger elements and um, less colors um, on that side too. So just so you get a little, uh, an idea of the scale, these pieces are probably, I don't know, a couple feet, uh, you know, two feet by two feet maybe, um, some smaller, some bigger, but I love looking at this wall and just how all of these sculptures are different. All of the shapes are different, but they look harmonious and they make sense because of the color choices. You can see common colors throughout at least several of these sculptures. And I really think her work stands out and it, it, everyone could draw some inspiration from some of these choices that she's making here. Here's another one. And I just, I love these two, all of the, the colors. And, and I notice here, even the kind of like rectangular piece on the right, even that piece, it's not a perfect rectangle it's a little off and I kind of love that. I think it it catches your eye in a way that um, something that's perfectly rectangular doesn't. So I love this combination of pieces together, especially um, for me, I love this, this piece up here with all the different shapes, just fun. So I pulled a few of her sculptures out and wanted to show you um, the I kind of pulled them out and uh, stuck them in with some of our color theory. Uh, so the first one is monochromatic. So I mean, I took some liberties here. It's not, none of these are exactly, um, but they are similar. So for monochromatic, you can see she's got some pink, some red, some maroon, even that black and that sandy color are almost like the light and the dark on the in the colorway here. So it looks so nice together the way she's just pulled basically three different colors to use together. Um, and you can kind of see at the bottom, I tried to make these little geometric shapes that illustrate um, the color choices that she's made. So these colors are actually pulled directly from her, her work. So these are the exact same colors that you see in her sculptures. Um, in the middle, we've got complementary and these are opposite on the color wheel. And I love the use of the mint green with the bright red. I cannot say that I see that color combination used very often. And I don't think I would ever pick those two colors to go together, but something about it really works. Um, and it's just how they contrast and they pop on the, on the sculpture um, and they look really nice. Um, then we've got the analogous combination. So colors next to each other on the color wheel. This one probably is the, the one I reached the, you know, I reached the furthest to um, make the connection, but you can definitely see we've got some of this like royal blue to violet and then red and then pink. So they're pretty close to each other on that wheel. And, and I thought it was a pretty good connection. So you can kind of see there's lots of different ways to combine color to create something like kind of magical and beautiful. Um, obviously all three of these have the, the color red woven through them. So, so they all look nice together on this page because they have that one color that is unifying everything. And then moving on from um, Tilda and we can, um, I'm happy to send you guys all a link to her, uh, her, her website too, when we send out the link to this recording or link it somewhere so you can check her out. But um, it's kind of fun. These are, <laughs> these are earrings that are currently available for purchase on some fast fashion websites. So geometric jewelry is in, we are on trend with our uh, class today. Um, and just for some inspiration, because I think this workshop is a little bit harder. It's more conceptual. So it's kind of hard to picture what your end product is going to look like. Um, over here, we've got some clay. So this is geometric jewelry using clay. Um, these two on the screen are laser cuts. Uh, I'm assuming they're laser cut wood. Um, and so those are kind of some interesting ideas here, thinking about uh, the negative space in the 
um, earrings here. And then these are just kind of fun. I love the big, bold shapes. You could definitely create a necklace out of some of these. And then this one up here is probably the most like what we're gonna make today. Um, just using some basic wooden shapes and gluing them together uh, to create some jewelry. Um, these same, I think all of these are clay uh, from what I can tell, except maybe this top left one, but I'm not sure what the medium is. So there's lots of different ways to interpret this geometric um, jewelry idea. And I wanted to kind of get you guys outside of the box a little bit for this class and not just think about you know, circles together and squares together and shapes that, you know, are just like circles, squares, triangles. I want us to think about how can I turn that circle or that triangle into another type of shape, like something a little bit more organic or something, uh, you, you know, something that isn't isn't so harsh. So anyway, I think we'll have fun kind of putting together our sculptures. We're all just going to make these mini sculptures and kind of like zone out and create some fun jewelry pieces today. So hopefully this stuff inspired you to um, get get moving with our uh, our creations this evening. And I'm very thirsty now. Um, we're gonna, I'm, I wanna move along here because I've already taken a little bit longer with the presentation than I'd hoped. So we're gonna just get right on into um, creating our creating our pieces. And if you have any questions about anything that we just um, you know briefly went over, throw them in the chat. Rachel and I are gonna try to get to them throughout the webinar. We're not really gonna have a Q&A right now. We're just gonna get into making. So. Hopefully you can see me again. And then we're gonna get right back over to our workstation. Can y'all see my workstation? Yep, you are good to go. Okay, great. So please throw any questions you have about that because it was kind of a lot of information that we went over pretty quickly and I don't want to overwhelm anyone so if you think of any questions during this just throw them in the chat um and we're gonna try to get get to all the questions so first thing we're gonna do just for fun I'm gonna empty my shapes out onto the table I, I also may have a few more than some of you because this I combined some of the ones that I had saved for, you know, I saved a little bit of extra for my demonstration here. Everybody should just have like a random assortment though. Um, and I think the best way to start, so I kind of showed you up top. Here's a couple examples. I also made this kind of like big fun brooch, which I'm also wearing. So I think it, the best way to go about this, again, this is just interpretational. We're all just going to have fun. We're not going to take it too seriously. We're going to kind of all be kids a little bit this evening and like have fun putting shapes together and mixing colors. So adults can have fun doing that too. So I think the best thing to do is to kind of decide what kind of jewelry piece you want to make. Um, with what you have included, you could make a set of earrings or um, a couple of brooches. So you've got options to do either of those things. And I would just think about that as you start. I'll be honest, when I started this lovely brooch, I um, was anticipating it would be an earring, but when I put it on my ear, it was way too big. And I like big earrings and it was even too big for me. Um, so something cool while we're kind of mapping out our shapes, think about what you want to make. I'm gonna make earrings this evening. That's what I would like to make. And I'm feeling like I wanna use, hmm, what do I wanna use? This is kind of fun because I gotta on the fly make something too. I'm kind of wondering if I wanna do one more triangles and one earring with circles, but kind of unify them by the color. I'm kind of thinking that might be the direction I go this evening. 
Um, as we lay out our shapes, um, this is all just ideas and we're not going to spend too terribly much time on this. Um, we're just going to kind of lay them out and think about what kind of thing we want to make. So, like I said, I think I'm going to make one earring triangular and one kind of circular, but unify them based on the colors that I'm choosing, which we'll do later. The only thing you want to keep in mind as you're maybe like kind of playing with what your shapes are going to be is that for the gluing purposes to combine these together, we actually don't want to set our shapes next to each other like that. Um, they do need to overlap a little bit so that they'll have a nice solid foundation for the glue. I tried to do it differently on this one here, and I actually um, put a little bit of a, like a T back here as a base, and it's okay, but it doesn't look that nice on the back, so you keep that in mind. You can kind of play around if, if you'd like to, but I think for my experimentation, the best way is to layer them. And this is all very lightweight, so you shouldn't really have any issues with um, them being too heavy for your ears. But what I want to show you here, as you can see, this one, they're two half circles. So what's cool about these little shapes is that they are lightweight enough to cut with a pair of scissors. You do want to be careful when cutting if you decide you'd like to. Let me see if I can show you on camera. You should be able to see on your, with your, um, yeah, doesn't really help. There is a wood grain on these. So you want to cut with the grain versus against the grain. If you cut against the grain, that's definitely where you're going to need some sandpaper to get rid of some of the um, splinters. But I'm going to cut this one in half and I'm going to cut it with the grain just for fun. Kind of go slow. And there we go. Now I have a little half circle to play with, which I think might be really fun to put the half circle on my triangle earring. I don't know, just playing around. With the triangle, you can't really, um, you can't really go you know, against or uh, with the grain, you kind of have to go against just because of how they're um, set up. I'm going to try it though. Ah, yeah, that one was no problem. That's not even sharp. So I'm thinking maybe also to unify my pieces, maybe I'll put little half shapes in each one too. I don't know. Just playing around here. And I really won't spend too much more time doing this. Um, kind of maybe like it flipped. Let's see. I don't know. I might mess around with that a little bit more after I get into the painting portion. Um, but I think for now, I'm kind of happy with these little, these little pieces that I've made here. And one thing, Rachel, Laura, that yeah, you had suggested when we did our practice run, which I think is a really good idea, if you come up with a composition while you're playing oh, yeah. with shapes that you really like, if you've got like your smartphone or a camera nearby, just take a quick picture of that because of course we're going to separate these shapes to paint them. And it's really easy, I'm speaking from personal experience here, it's really easy to forget exactly how you had them laid out before you took them apart to paint them. So that was a great idea Laura had while we were doing our practice run. Thank you for mentioning my great idea, Rachel, um, that course. I had already forgotten about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning that. And I actually, I haven't, I don't love where I've got the triangle, but again, I don't want to spend too much time nitpicking now. I want to have some fun mixing my colors. And then it's possible too that once I arrange, um, once I have my colors on my shapes, that will change my arrangement as well. So I'd like to show you, I do have some pieces already painted. Um, just to kind of give you an idea too, um, once our pieces are painted, you can really see, oh, 
it looks so fun. I don't know. You could really just, for me, even just like something so simple and weird um, would look really fun as a pair of earrings um, or as a brooch, especially if you have any like arty people in your life. If you weren't into wearing earrings or brooches, maybe they'd be fun gifts to give. So you can see it really is going to change and look different once you add the color. So I feel pretty happy with where I'm at and in the pieces I'm going to use here. And like Rachel said, maybe I'll, oh, I kind of like that. Maybe I'll take a little picture here. So I'll keep that. You could see here. So that way I'll remember. Mm, loving triangles. Me too. Okay, people, I think we're going to get ready to do some color mixing. Like I said, we don't need to spend too much time on this piece unless people are, are really wanting me to wait. But I think we're going to go ahead and get into our color mixing. Um, so to prep, you're going to take apart what you have created. And we're going to take our scotch tape. And we're going to, or masking tape, whatever you have, we're going to take a few small pieces here and create these little tape donuts. And you've got your bookmarks. You're going to put some tape donuts on your bookmarks and you're going to stick the shapes to them that you're going to paint. You can choose to paint as many of your shapes as you want right now. In fact, I would suggest it. Just keep in mind if you've already come up with a shape that you like or a, a design that you like, take a picture so you know which ones you're going to be using. But this is going to be the way that we are able to paint our shapes with our uh, regular adult size hands. Um, I was trying to come up with a way to do this where I didn't end up with paint everywhere. And this was the solution. So we're going to stick our shapes to our bookmarks. Um, oh, and something I didn't mention, and I should, um, you can kind of tell on your shapes that there is like a front and a back, so to speak. The back is a little flatter, and the front, the edges are just a little bit more rounded. So it's easier to tell on the big pieces, the, the little circles, not as much, but um, definitely on the triangles and on the bigger circles, you can tell. Anybody having any questions or anything they're thinking about or they want to share right now? People are probably like me, they're just busy using their hands and they're not going to be able to type and do their craft at the same time, but just why I throw it out there. You can always raise your hand and we can unmute you and you can ask a question or make a comment. I'd be it curious. Seems like to, everyone is taping down shapes. Taping, taping down shapes. I'll be curious to um, know later on who ended up cutting some shapes and um, who ended up just using the shapes as is and kind of like, are you doing earrings or brooches or you don't know? Maybe that'd be fun to share what piece of jewelry you're thinking about making. And I'm going to tape a few more than what I'm actually going to use just in case inspiration strikes me once the <laughs> shapes are painted. Like maybe I want to add a bunch. I just realized I don't have any squares in my bunch here. So I, somebody out there must have a lot of squares because I don't have any. It's kind of fun to not know what shapes you're going to get when you open up your bag. And I think I'm going to cut down another triangle just for the heck of it. If you find that your um, piece splinters a little bit, which mine aren't, but if they do, that's where you're going to take that sandpaper. 
just sand it down a little bit. Since you're going to be wearing these on your ears or on your body, you do want to be mindful of that. You don't want to have something super sharp. <laughs> From experience, it's not pleasant. All right, I'm just about done here with my shape taping. All right. I am going to move on to our painting portion now. I'm just going to set these aside. All right, some color mixing. So I'd love for everyone to pick one color right now up at the top, um, a color they'd like to explore. And we're going to work on everyone making a dark, a medium, and a light version of that color. So we're going to work on some monochrome today. Of course, you're at home, and if you choose not to do that, that's fine. But I think it'd be a fun exercise for everyone to get started with that first. And then as you figure out your mixing, you could choose to branch out and do some other colors as well. And I think... Um, this evening, we're going to have, Rachel's going to turn her camera on as well, and we're both going to show you um, kind of two different uh, screens so you can see some different um, color mixing here. So I am going to start with orange. I would like to figure out how to make a nice orange, and I'm going to work on a darker orange, um, a lighter orange, and a medium orange. So of course for that, I'm going to start with some red and I'm going to start with some yellow. And it sounds weird. I'm going to use some blue, I think, as well, potentially to darken it up a little bit if I need to darken it. So I need to clear my space, though. I'm kind of, it's kind of messy right now. And I'd love for everyone to just shout out what colors they plan on, what color they plan on making, if they're going to work with us to make a little monochrome set. I will go ahead and add that over on the other side here. I'm going to leave Laura uh, explaining what she's doing and narrating in that. But if you want to just kind of see some alternative colors happening on the other side, I'm going to try for a green and a purple. Ooh. We've got that someone who's going to do some browns, too. That's fun. Yeah, and brown is a fun one. So, like, you probably notice you don't see brown or black on the color wheel, and that's because you can mix all the colors together to create those, those two shades. But you can definitely have a brown that leans more purple and a brown that leans more, um, you know, orange or red. So you can have a warmer or a cooler brown. Um, and the other thing I, I wanted to mention is, of course, if you want to do pink, um, which I saw someone's doing, which I love, you have plenty of paint to do this project, but you do have significantly less pink in here. Um, so just be mindful of that when you're mixing. Um, there is a little bit less pink. Okay, so orange. I'm going to get started. Uh, yellow is what I'm going to start with here. And I'm just going to pull a little blob out here on my palette. To paint these shapes, we're going to really use a thin amount of paint, so you don't need to worry too much about um, not having enough paint. I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, but I do just want to throw that out there so you don't just like dump your whole cup onto the palette. I wouldn't go that far. I would just start with a little and add as needed. And the way I like to set up my paint palette when I'm mixing is to... Wow, is to add the colors kind of towards the outside of the ring and then I work on mixing them kind of in between here or like in the middle or right next to it, um, but I kind of organize it that way. And I can be a little bit of a messy painter personally, so um, some people might not like that's the style that I use, but that's how I am when I'm mixing. I'm just kind of like going for it. So I'm gonna start by pulling some yellow out to the middle I'm going to pull some red in here too, not that much, and just start kind of swirling around and seeing what we get. 
I have to say this is a little bit too ketchup and mustardy for me and it kind of makes me, ugh, I don't love that. So I think I'm going to clean off my red brush here by just dab dabbing it at the bottom. And that'll pretty much clear out your brush. You're gonna take um, a paper towel, just kind of wipe your brush clean here. And now I'm ready to dip into that white, which I'm just gonna put a little bit of white on the end of my palette here so that I can kind of dip into that as needed and then keep my clean white over here as my reserve. All right, I'm gonna add a little white in here. I want it to be a little bit more creamy and a little bit less, um, it's just a little bit less ketchup and mustard mixed together orange. Ooh, I'm getting kind of like a dream sickly color, but I think I need some more red now. So it's just, you're just going back and forth, adding different colors together to kind of create a color that you are satisfied with. I'm actually not an acrylic painter. It's it's a medium that I have explored, but it's not my personal favorite. I, like Rachel, prefer watercolor um, or oil. I really like to paint with oil, but I haven't done it in a very long time. So anyway, I'm not like a paint, an acrylic paint mixing expert. It's just something that I enjoy doing. And I hope everyone's just having a nice relaxing time mixing paint. This isn't, this is kind of the fun part for me is coming up with my colors. So I'm happy with how this, my color is here. It's like a little creamsicle-y. Um, so I'm gonna just keep making a bigger um, portion of this so that I'll have some to separate out to make my dark color, my dark version, and then my light version as well. So I'm just gonna keep kind of expanding my, pool here. I really like that sort of dream sickle color that you came up with. So Thank you. it's almost like sort of peachy, a peachy. Yeah. Nice. I've got sort of a hunter green going on down here. It's interesting oh. how like the hues of the primary colors, it's I don't know how well you can see the color accurately there, but it's interesting oh, yeah. how that changes the tint of your secondary color. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, because of course there's different types of, like there's going to be different bases that you start with as far as your blue, your red, and your yellow. Um, so that does inform whatever colors you're making from those colors, of course. So yeah, you're, if you're using paint that you have at home, not just like the ones that came in your kit, you're definitely gonna have some different hues than what, um, than what Rachel and I are sharing here. So I'm happy with my color right now. So what I'm gonna do is take just a little swatch of it and I'm gonna move it over here. Again, you really aren't going to use that much paint, so you don't to, you shouldn't be too concerned about it having issue. And what I'm going to do is take just a teeny dab of blue, which is kind of scary. I don't know how this is going to turn out. We're just going to see. Um, I could take a little bit more time and mix kind of like a brown together um, to mix in to kind of darken it up, but I'm just going to start with the blue and see what happens. Just to give it a little more of a brown color here. Because basically what I'll do is kind of turn it into a little bit more of a brown and then pull a little bit more yellow to come in here to kind of counteract that brown. And then, you know what, now I need just a little bit more red to kind of pull back some of that warmth. I feel like it's a little bit challenging to show on camera, but I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna work on seeing if I could get this so you all can really see a difference here. And don't be afraid to mess up. If you don't like the color, you've got more paint, you can make it happen. So 
for my orange, it is kind of turning into a like a little brown orange. So I'm going to take a little dip of white and kind of lighten it back up a little. White, you got to be careful with. If you have too much, you're going to really have a pastel color on your hands, which won't always translate as being a darker color than, um, you know, it, it will turn into a lighter color versus a darker color. I just think this is fun. How are you? What are you working on now, Rachel? Light color, light green? Yep, so I went ahead and did my darker green and then I just pulled some of my medium to make some light green here too. And they do look really nice together. Ignore that weird yellow blob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those are really nice good. together. Like it, it turned out, especially once I got the dark and the light, I was a lot happier with the set. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'm kind of happy with mine too. I don't feel like it's as noticeable on the camera as it is on my palette, but I guess it's just the way it goes. I'm happy with my like darker kind of brown orange. So now I'm gonna make a lighter one. And I wonder if I can show you a little swatch here. I'm looking to see if I have any paper, a little scrap paper. here's my little color wheel. I'm just going to do a little test so we can, I can see what the dark looks like. And then I'm going to do the medium. And if you just do what I just did, just pull the head of your brush off when you're cleaning it with the paper towel. Just stick it back on. It'll be fine for today's purposes. I apologize, but when we are giving away free craft supplies, we are not always able to get the highest, highest quality of items. All right, so let me do my medium here. Yeah, not bad. And then I'm going to do a light, a lighter version. So I'm going to grab some white over here. Grab a little of my orange and red. Using up all of my yellow. And this doesn't have to be exact. We're just having fun. We're just playing. I'm pretty happy with where mine are going though. I hope everybody else is enjoying their paint mixing here because we are going to spend a few more minutes mixing and then we're going to start just putting some color on our shapes. All right, here's my light color. So you can kind of see all three of them here. You can definitely see the difference. Rachel, how are you doing? I'm getting ready to start trying some purple. And I was going to mention too while I'm here, if you are mixing purple on the color wheel, technically you would do red and blue. But because of the particular shades of red and blue that we have, I highly recommend using your pink instead, the pink and the blue to make, sure, to make your purple. Yes, good idea. Even just some pink, like even using all three together and just like a smaller amount of, um, you'll notice uh, it's the, depending on how much blue you add, you're going to either end up with a cool purple or a warm purple. So I'm going to start painting some of my shapes. Um, if you're not ready to do that, totally fine. I'm going to get started um, just to kind of show you um, up top. I am just going to kind of wing it. Um, if you have your reference photo um, and you know which shapes are going to go in which configuration, um, go ahead and pull it up. If you didn't use a reference photo or you don't care or you're being sporadic like me, you don't have to, but I do have my reference photo here. So if I want to refer back to it, I'll kind of remember which shapes are which. Uh, for which configuration in case that affects what colors I'm going to paint them. So 
think I'm going to start with my circle here and I'm going to do a, my light color and I'm just going to lightly brush my paint. And this one, I think I'm going to get away with just one coat, which is really handy. But we'll see. Laura, um, before you get too far, do we want, do you want to have people, is now the time to do the hot glue guns? Should we be plugging those in now? Let's go ahead. Yeah, if you feel like you're ready with your mixing, um, your paint mixing to start painting, that is that is a good time to plug in your glue gun so that it's nice and hot. Thank you for reminding me, Rachel. Of course. And I'm plugging mine in now. As I speak. So glue guns, if you haven't used them before, the tips of the glue guns get pretty hot. Um, I did just plug mine in. Um, so now I'm going to be careful about where I set the glue gun um, and where, where it is in relation to me. So I do not burn myself while it is heating up because it will be hot and you just want to be careful. You can choose to set it like this. I usually just set mine flat, honestly, because it always tips over with the the cord, I don't know. I'm just very special in that way. So glue gun plugged in and we're going to start painting our shapes. So a little tip I want to show you since you're, you've secured your shapes to this paper, you can paint the edges, which I highly recommend doing. It will look much more professional and put together. You can pick up your paper and just paint around the edges this way and it's going to be easy peasy. And what's cool about this project is that even if we don't all finish together this evening, you'll definitely be able to finish um, once the webinar is over or, you know, tomorrow or a later date too because the paint dries pretty quick and you can um, you can make as many of these as you want, kind of. So there, I've started with my light color and I think now I'm gonna do a medium orange here. And of course, if you're doing a bunch of different colors, I love that and I tend to be a pretty colorful person myself, so I respect it. And I can't wait to see what colors some of y'all chose to make. And if you're wondering about the direction to um, paint in, it's really up to you. You can probably, I mean, you could create different um, textures uh, on your sculptures, just depending on their brush stroke. So keep that in mind too, if that's something that's important to you and you want to make sure that you have, um, that, you know, you have more, more brush stroke on there, you'll just paint a little bit thicker. And a little bit more sporadically possibly. I like my brush uh, stroke to be pretty flat and uniform for this purpose for some reason, but you can do whatever you want. I'm kind of thinking as I'm doing this about my two shapes here. So I've got a light, I've got a dark or a medium, I mean, and I think I'll do a dark maybe for my little triangle, which is, yeah, I think I'll do a darker version for my little triangle. Mm, seeing that on the wood, I, it's hard, it, again, not on camera, it's like a perfect little burnt sienna color and I love it. Okay. And now let's see, I'm gonna paint this one. And I will say, I anticipate that we will probably run a little bit past 8.30 this evening, uh, just looking at the time now. Um, 
So I promise I'm not trying to rush, rush, but I do want to make sure I'm able to demonstrate some of these things on, um, on the webinar, whether or not you're able to get to that step or not, you'll have it in the recording um, to look back on. Okay. Rachel, how's it going with you? I'm like not looking at the screen that much. I'm mostly just looking at my piece. How is it going over there for you? I'm doing the same thing. I keep glancing up to see if anyone has said anything in the chat. Me too. <laughs> getting back into it. Like it's so uh, meditative. It's just like you can get so lost and involved in mixing these colors. Um, Agree. Yeah, I wasn't originally planning on combining the green and the purple. I was kind of more just mixing the two to demonstrate, but I, I mean, I think green and purple go together, so I might yeah. just try it and see what happens. It's super springy, too. I'm kind of making autumnal earrings, it looks like, but or 70s, which I love. <laughs> If you can't tell by how excited I got saying it. It's um, definitely on brand for you. Like this yeah. is your side <laughs> of the color wheel for sure. I know, but I'm trying to branch out and get into green now. Got green pants on and green earrings. So, you know, try not to be a one trick pony or whatever, whatever the phrase is. Okay. Let's see here. I think I need to do another light. I think I'm gonna do the smaller shapes in the light color here. I'm not always that good about cleaning my brush either and I feel very proud of how much I've cleaned it this evening. A lot of times I just like go for it and my palette ends up a little crazy. I do the same thing, especially <laughs> with watercolor. It's like, eh, we'll see what happens. Oh, I love that with watercolor too, because like some of my muddy, weird colors, I think are some of the most beautiful. It's true. It's like, oh, that's how I make that color. Okay. Yeah. And especially if you're trying to make different blacks and browns and stuff, like natural nature colors, it's like the way to go. A messy palette. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got more of my medium, so I'm just going to start using it with some of these because I don't think I plan to use these in my creation anyway. They're kind of just extra in case I feel like it. What's cool is if you're painting um, thin layers, it dries really fast. Like this one that I first did is already dry. So is that one. Mine don't really look like they need a second coat, to be honest. Adding the white in there really helps um, uh, create a little bit more opaque uh, colors. So that really helped me out. But if you, or if you don't like the look of the wood grain, I also don't mind the wood grain look. So for me, it's okay. But if you need to do a second or third coat, go right ahead. Of course, that is perfectly fine. I think, I think Rachel also, when we were kind of prepping for this class, made kind of like a marbly one too. So of course, all of these are solid colors that we've demonstrated, but you could also marble, you could do some kind of pattern on these if you really wanted to. Um, maybe wouldn't be able to get done for this class today, but for future, you can kind of do whatever you want. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about where I'm at with my shapes here. The painting is actually pretty quick with these since we're, our canvas is pretty small. The painting portion is actually faster than the color mixing. Okay, I'm going to check on these here and Pretty good. 
So I'm going to start while um, y'all are painting still, uh, lifting up my pieces and just kind of checking the sides. The sides may have a little, some globs. I don't mind kind of pulling that off with my hand here and just kind of like touching it and that doesn't bother me, but it could bother you and that's okay. You could use a paper towel for that as well. So you could just get a paper towel, lift off your shape and just kind of dab the side if you see any globs, which just happens. I highly recommend if if you were to have time later on, which we just don't for this purpose, but painting the back would really make these look nice and professional. Um, I actually didn't paint the backs of any of these and I regret it. I can go back and do that and I probably will. Um, I just think it looks so much nicer because an earring, you do kind of see the back sometimes if you have your hair um, short or up. You could paint the back a different color or you could use the same color. I think it actually would be kind of fun to flip it over and then paint like a different color on the back if you were pretty careful not to spill it over on the edge. Or even like a different, like a on the, you know, the, the light one that you did doing a dark color on the back might be kind of fun. Here I missed a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can revive a little bit of my dark paint here. Kind of. I did dip my fingernail into the white paint. That was really handy. Okay, so if you're not looking at the screen and you're working on your painting, all I'm doing right now is lifting off my shapes and kind of like blotting these sides where it's a little bit um, like bubbled up a little bit. It's a little bit gloppy just so that it'll dry a little faster and I can get on to my construction. Okay. Like I'm doing some of this off camera too, so I apologize. Okay. Moving right along. Wow, we are like all working very hard today because we are getting almost nothing coming through our chat. It has been very quiet and I was thinking Super quiet. Thing. everyone is just painting away, I'm thinking. I know. Which is like what I would be doing if I were at home too. I I would probably not be the chattiest participant. Okay, so I'm touching up the edge of some of mine, um, which is not hard to do just by holding it like this. I missed the edge like completely over here. Okay. I'm feeling pretty good about all of my shapes here, even if I'm not planning to use them right away. I'm feeling pretty happy with how they color-wise turned out. I feel like I got a good light, medium, and dark. And I love that Rachel is showing us different um, colors in here. Just a quick tip if you want to do some kind of marbling or some kind of uh, variance for my middle shape here. I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but I just layered in some of my different shades of the same color to give it a little bit of depth. So that's a quick way to kind of do that if you want to play with that now. Yeah, some wet into wet painting. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, marbling uh, is actually easier than it looks. Like, I feel like it looks really elegant, but it's actually not that hard to do. You're just swirling around 
wet paint. <laughs> you just don't want to swirl it too much because that's when you're going to mix the colors. But if you're just swirling it around, you can even see on your palette, you start to marble sometimes, uh, not even meaning to, even just like, you know, you start to get a little marbling effect. So just something fun. All right. Well, I'm going to give y'all, I'm going to kind of clear out my workspace a little bit, and I'm going to give y'all a few more minutes to do some painting. Um, and I, oh, I got some questions coming in, so I'll answer those because I'm kind of ready to got, do the construction demonstration. So yes, um, the wooden shapes. I got these wooden shapes from Michael's in the like children's kind of craft area where they have like pipe cleaners um and i th think oh i don't think i have the package anymore i think they were just called wooden shapes while you guys are working let me just put the link in the in the chat here for you um paints on hands <laughs> yeah I probably should have mentioned up top that acrylic paint will stain your clothes. Um, you can get it off sometimes with a little bit of dish soap, but it, for the most part, it, it, it sticks, it stays. So hopefully y'all were um, careful uh, when you when you're painting or when you chose what to wear to this class. To be careful because my glue gun is plugged in right where, right by my mouse for my computer. Okay, here's a link to one set that's kind of these um bigger teardroppy kind of shapes. I'm sure all like other crafters have things similar. Um but this is what we're using today. And there was an option for, of course, the triangles and the squares as well, but I'm actually not seeing them right off the bat. I wonder if they're low stock or something. Anyway, that's a good, that'll get you started at least with some shape ideas here. Okay, I do want to pause for a second while y'all are working. Um, I just want to hear, I, I can wait another like few minutes before I start doing a construction demonstration. Um, are, you, are you all ready to move on to doing construction or would you like some more time to paint? Even if just a few people reach out, that'll tell me. Okay, we already have a more time. And we have her ready. Let's, I'll wait a few, a few more minutes here. Um, and then I'll just kind of show you what you're, uh, how to construct, but I'll start just kind of playing around on the screen. So if you want to watch, you can. But I'll talk about it in a few minutes. So don't feel like you have to tune in. I'm just going to practice lining up some of these shapes. Especially because the way that you thought you were going to arrange it may change based on what you ended up, how you ended up painting your shapes. Like now I'm thinking I actually painted four triangles. Maybe I want to use four triangles as the base which originally I didn't want to do. I was going to use circles. Hmm. So that's why it's honestly fun to think about it before, but then be open to your idea changing and to like just be open to the colors 
like kind of telling you what they want. Like I really kind of like the ombre of that. Mm, maybe I'll have to do that. Maybe I'll have to make three earrings. This is kind of weird. And then mix and match them when I wear them sometimes. I feel like that could be fun. But anyway, you could like sit and like play with this. I feel like a lot for a long time. <laughs> Let's see, maybe I want to throw in, I feel like what's going to unify these no matter what is having one, at least one of each of these colors in each of my designs. Hmm. I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. Like none of these look like um, the artist that I showed you. Like my sculptures don't look like her art, but I do feel inspired by what I saw of her art. And even like I have all these other painted shapes, like if I wanted to right now, I could start mixing. If I had other colors, I could start mixing other colors in here and just like really playing with it, especially with a brooch. You don't have to worry about it being heavy or bulky. You could really start to be abstract in your design. I feel like these other ones are not so abstract. They're a little bit more... Um, maybe conceptual, like kind of picturing like a sunset with that top one, but I don't know. You could really, you could just get crazy. So I mean, I love those together though. Realize I should put the lid on my paint before I start, um, doing all this here, I will spill. So once I get the lids on my paint, I'm going to demonstrate how to construct for those of you who are ready. And if you are not ready, I would encourage you just to pause and watch what I'm doing. It's not groundbreaking or anything, but just so you know, in case, um, so, so you know whenever you're ready to do that. Okay, so when you're ready to construct, if you have an image that is uh, that you've taken as your reference, pull that up, and then try to recreate what you uh, what you made. I'm not going to do that because I've changed my mind completely now. So I'm just I'm gonna have it there for reference, but I am just gonna kind of like go rogue here and do my own. Do my own thing. So you're going to want to try to construct your shape again. All right. Those are kind of fun. But they are symmetrical. And I would encourage you all, if you have a thing for symmetry, to try to forget about it for this project. It could just be fun to mix it up a little bit. But if you don't want to, it's cool. Sometimes okay. I think it's... I have a thing for symmetry and that's asking a lot. <laughs> I think it's fun to uh, just try to get out of our patterns and our boxes sometimes and try something new. Um, because I'm kind of the op... I, well, it goes both ways. I love symmetry, but I also don't like it because I feel like symmetry requires perfection and I do not like to operate in that way in my life and in my art. So I like a little asymmetry because I feel like it offers a little more forgiveness. Well, and I guess it can also look like really bad sometimes. So you, it, I don't know. What were you going to say, Rachel? Oh, I was just going to say, I guess there is a little bit of a difference between symmetry and balance. So true, like, true. You know, they're not symmetrical, but there is a balance to them that makes them still very satisfying to look at. Yes, that is a really great point. 
Okay. I kind of like the idea of having then a circle on top like this. So I think that's what I'm going to go for are these, which may be your cup of tea. They may not be, but I think this is how I'm going to proceed. So just like building, we're going to, I'm going to start with, I like this one on the right a little bit better. So I think that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with this piece here. And I'm gonna put a little glue down and I'm gonna glue my little accent pieces on first. So you're really just building here. You don't need a ton of glue as I put a ton of glue on it. You do not need that much. And you do wanna be mindful. Your glue will, if you haven't used hot glue, it will have little strings. It will kind of bubble out. And I do think that will make your piece look less professional if you can see little glue bubbles everywhere. So just be mindful of that and be careful less is more. It can be hard though. It can be hard to control the glue. Something that you kind of just get used to with practice. Again, I don't mind. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit for you. I don't mind peeling the glue off with my fingers. Even when it's a little hot, I actually don't mind doing that. Just to kind of get rid of that since the hot glue is just plastic, it peels off pretty nice um, if, you, if it's not quite set. Okay, so I started with that one. And now I think I'm going to put this one, glue it on top of, sorry, on top of that. So that's my base. I'm just going to do a little line of glue here. Oh no, come back. Just kind of hold them down. Press down. I'm going to try to address some of these glue drips now. Just be careful. The hot glue is hot. Here's kind of my crazy little shape that I've made. And then I do want to, I've decided, add this to the top. And I did end up moving it down just slightly so that my circle would have enough space here to kind of hold on to. All right. So this is how I've constructed my first piece. You're gonna let it dry, which will be very quick. Hot glue dries quick. See, it would look so nice if I went ahead and just painted this right now, painted the back. I also thought about, um, uh, you could glue another shape of the same size to the back um, if you were wanting to go that route. It would add some bulk to it, but you could do that to cut down on what you're gonna be painting. But anyway, I think uh, that can wait. You could also paint the back after you glue the, um, after you glue this on. Perfect, someone said they already painted their back and that is wonderful. I would recommend that. Okay, so now I'm kind of looking at this. This is my earring. So I'm gonna try to mimic my other one. But what I decided is maybe, Maybe I want the 
this one in the back here and the lighter one out front, kind of like the same as what I did here. So I am kind of making the shape a little bit symmetrical, but the little design pieces, those are going to be different for mine. So I'm constructing this other one kind of the opposite way and I'm gonna glue this on first because I know I want that there. And I do kind of like it a little off. Ooh, look at that glue bubble. I gotta get that out of there. Goodness, okay. All right. And now I'm gonna glue my other piece here. And then I'm gonna glue my little accents. Once the glue is a little hotter, you do have a little more control over it, I feel like. When it's um when it's not super hot, I that's when it you get more globby glue. Once it gets hot, it gets really uh more liquidy and it's I like using it that way a little bit better, honestly. Okay, let's see, what do we wanna add? Maybe that there, I wanna do three on this one just to be crazy. I don't hate that. Because you can see I don't love it, I'm not convinced. Hmm, see now I'm kind of getting Log down with symmetry myself. I'm gonna try it. I'm just gonna go for it. What's the worst that can happen? I feel like it's very easy to overthink this if you let yourself. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a really good point. No overthinking. Just do it. That's what I'm doing. I'm following my own advice. Okay. Woo, okay. Hot glue is amazing and really annoying at the same time. Because now I've got all these little bits that you can work on peeling off or um, just little strings. From far away, you don't notice them, but from up close and on camera, <laughs> you definitely do. Okay. So I'm satisfied with where my earrings are at. I kind of envision them being worn like that. And then I wanna put some backs on them. So I will be honest, hot glue is not my preferred way to secure metal to wood. I would use an E6000 glue or a super glue, um, but we just weren't able to provide that for everybody in this kit. So for this purpose, we're gonna use hot glue. Um, in the beginning when I flipped this one over on the back and it didn't have uh, earring that's why it, it comes off you can wear them but just be prepared to reattach that every so often or just buy some super glue or some e6000 that's what I use for all my jewelry and I sell make and sell jewelry I use the e6000 glue and I don't have any issues so that's what I'd recommend if you have some or wanted to buy some but just for getting started don't feel like you have to invest in something like that um just for fun, it's not it's not a necessity. So what I'm going to do is flip both of these around, find a nice little secure flat spot to glue my earring post, put a dab of glue, and there we go. Same thing. Something I wanted to note, even though we are at our 8.30 time, is that I did discover that you can take a little nail and a hammer and you could punch a little hole in 
your shape and that would provide you to put a jump ring so that you could make earrings that hang or you could make earrings that um you know that are are just swinging earrings so they're connected by two jump rings some of the examples we showed had that so that's an option for you too again we're not doing it tonight but i want to show you you've got so many options with this um and you'll be able to kind of create lots of different things we talked about rachel and i talked about making like little wooden shaped garland or um making magnets like fridge magnets like i feel like there's so many fun little things you could do with these even if you're not like a statement jewelry person this could be applied for lots of different lots of different ways kind of wish i don't have this little glue spot here so i am thinking about I don't think I have any other shapes to add. Just trying to think, maybe I could cover it up some way with this triangle. So I'm just going to try that. <laughs> I don't have any other triangles that are like in the same color family. So, or any other shapes. So it'll just kind of throw it off and it won't look very good. So I'm just going to, I'm going to live on the edge here. Hmm. Man, I don't really like that either. I'm just going to stick with it. I'm not going to be a perfectionist. Okay. You also have backs in here. So, of course, your earrings, you want to have backs. I honestly have a hard time putting on earring backs with my nails being kind of long right now. Let's see if I can do it. Yay. So, this is my pair of earrings that I made. I'm also going to glue this together real quick, but I want to know if any of you have any questions because we're getting, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to have to wrap up pretty soon. So if you have any questions about what we talked about today, or um, if you want to share what you've created, why don't you let us know in the chat right now and we'll get through anyone that we can, but otherwise we're going to wrap up in about five minutes. Can you think of anything I might have missed, Rachel? Not offhand. I'm all wrapped up in putting my earring back so <laughs> too. So um, but no, I think that that's good. We have um one question in the chat. Can we share results on Instagram? If so, what yeah. or do we have a tag? We actually don't have a tag, and I thought about that before, but um yeah, you could share it on Instagram and tag Champagne Public Library. Um, the library does have an Instagram. Um, or if you wanted to, we could we could probably start a little hashtag crafty adults. Um, I have no idea what exists on that hashtag right now, but or just tag the library. That would be the easiest and best way, probably. Okay, now I have this little piece here and, and now I'm like getting obsessed with building on it and I, I don't know, maybe I need to add a little red in here and make it kind of like a sunset. I don't know what this is. When you first put it together, it made me think of an ice cream cone. Yeah, a little ice cream cone. I don't know. I don't love that now for whatever reason. I'm so picky. Maybe I need to add another. I think so I don't like this shape. And I'm going to try to peel it off and see what happens and demonstrate that while we're waiting to see. No questions. I'm so surprised. This was kind of like a different tutorial. I thought for sure we'd have some, some questions. But maybe that means we did a good job teaching. I'm going to choose to look at it that way. I continue to construct. So relaxing. That makes me happy. I agree. I always get a little nervous before these. Of course, like technology could go wrong or like other things can happen. But I do like pretty much always feel like once I get settled in, it is so relaxing just to like sit and make with other people, even virtually. Um, so yeah, that's really exciting. And I love to hear that. Thank you what class uh upcoming 
Crafty Adults. Rachel, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about what's coming up for Crafty Adults because our lovely Rachel is going to be teaching. That was a pretty great segue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our next Crafty Adults will be um, in person. So I do want to make sure that we get that out there. Um, we're really excited to, Rachel and I have been um, talking about like some really special and fun things we can do as we get ready to welcome everybody back in the building for Crafty Adults. Um, so this class will be in person. It will be held at the main library. It will also, uh, it'll be on Wednesday. Um, it'll be on Wednesday, May 11th. Yes, Wednesday, okay. May 11th at 7 p.m. And what so will I wasn't we be sure making? If I could switch back to my face or if I'll just let you guys look at my earrings while I talk. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, look at them. Yeah. <laughs> Those look great, Rachel. They're my little, I tried to be a little bit uh, less identical. So now they, I don't know how well it's coming through. One screen, it looks really good and one screen, it doesn't, but they, I kind of alternated the purple and the green, but um, yes. Yeah, so in May for our first in-person event together in however long it's been, we are going to learn how to hand sew our own blank notebooks. Um, it's a, I'm calling it a scrapbook journal. It's a technique that I learned back when I was in grad school years ago, and um, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of a simple way to make a blank notebook that you can carry around with you, and you can use all kinds of different paper for the covers, for the insides. There's lots of versatility here. Um, we just picked out some really fun patterned scrapbook paper for the covers which is why we called it a scrapbook journal. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I agree. It's going to be great. I'm like half listening and half trying to put my earrings in right now. So I took my headphones off. <laughs> so you sound like you're in a, in a water tunnel right now or something. And OK, got my earrings in. Mm. Cool. OK, I'm going to come back over to you all as a human now, um, now that you've seen the things I've put together here. Oh, I got to show you. Here's the earrings that I made for our test run. Tell how well you can see them. I'm really glad, like, you had talked about how the earring backs come off, but I mean, it stayed on. I mean, I've just been sitting here, but it's stayed together really well so far. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't have any issue with mine. Like I was able to wear them for, I think a couple times. I just noticed the next time I went to put them on, oh, that one fell off sometime. So yeah, let me see. It's hard to tell because I have my headphones in. So yeah. See, these are pretty big, but I like them. I'm into this. The color is very summery to me. Like I, I really am into that orange and yellow. Like usually orange and yellow are not my favorite, but I, I'm into that combination. Cool. <laughs> I love it. I think orange and yellow is like more autumnal. So I'm happy to hear you think summer. Maybe I'm just wishful thinking. I'm like ready, ready for it to be warm consistently. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, same. Oh, I see. Um, Ada, let's let you share. Um, and then uh, this will be last call for a share. If you want to share, uh, pop in the chat here that you want to. Um, but otherwise, let's see what Ada has has created. OK, Ada, I promoted you to a panelist. So you should be able to turn on your screen if you want to share. Yeah. So you might have to turn your camera on. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is really cool. I love that. Thank you. So you definitely did three different little shades of purple and they're like a little gray, gray kind of purple. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Or is it, maybe it's more lavender and it's just a camera, but. It's my terrible camera. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so good. I yeah, love it. Are you going to turn it into a brooch? Yeah. Or just like a. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank Yay! You. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you. That's so fun. 
Mm. Okay, just because we're a little over and Rachel and I got to get packed up and out of this library building. Um, we're going to go ahead and end. I didn't see anybody else say they were interested in sharing tonight, um, which makes sense. I know this project, we kind of rushed through the end a little bit, and some of you probably are still getting your stuff put together, but um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's been really fun to paint with you all and, you know, be a little experimental this evening. This was more I don't know. I feel like everybody got to show that off their artistic spirit a little bit more with this one. So that makes me happy. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll see you at the next Crafty Adults, which will be in person. Um, we will be starting registration for all of our regulars who know that we start at uh, the first. We're actually starting on the 2nd of May. Registration will open at 9 a.m. on Monday, May 2nd. Um, just because we want library staff to be in the building when the sign-up goes live in case there's any issues or you want to call and sign up, um, that'll be an option for you. So next, next Crafty Adults, as Rachel explained, we're going to make the um, handmade scrapbook journals. So I'm so excited for that. And um, check our library calendar for any other, we've got tons of other events that are wrapping up or ramping up to be coming up. Yeah. More in-person stuff them. happening. <laughs> no, no, we've got, uh, I just, I know a lot of people have been curious about children's programs. Those are coming back to in-person in May. So, um, I hope everybody will be, uh, relieved and excited to come back for some programming here. So thank you all for joining us tonight and we'll see you for the next one. Have a good night, everybody. Bye.